Okay, so again, welcome to this demo of Career Eco, which is going to be the platform that we're using for all of our career events at Florida State University. Um, you're looking at the Career Eco login page right now. So if you're starting from scratch and you don't have a profile created yet, this is where you're going to start. And you can look here at the register as an employer button. That's going to be for you. So you can fill out all of your information here, click register, and it will create a profile for you. Um, so I have already have an employer account so I can show you. Um, this is what creating your profile is going to look like. So it'll already have your username, which is just going to be your email. You can go through and edit your name, um, first, last, um, title, any information that you want visible. Um, can be in here. And then also you can set your email preferences. This is going to be your email preferences from the career ecosystem, not necessarily your preferences that students are going to see about how to get in contact with you. So I just wanted to make that point clear. You can upload a personal photo as well. If you're not going to be sharing your video, it might be nice to just have a headshot there so that candidates know what you're looking like. Um, so you can do that. Feel free. Um, and then we're going to talk about the organization profile um, in a little bit. So once you have your profile all set up, um, you're going to go and register for an event. So um, for the first person who's kind of like the admin of your organization for your different events, they're going to need to go in and add you to specific events. So you should see your whole team listed here under the admin button. Um, and then and you can do a lot from this page, which we will talk about um, in a little bit. Um, but you will also be able to add people to specific events. So if you have some team members going to an FSU event and then other team members going to a different event, you can access all of that from your admin page as well as the event page itself. So to register for an upcoming event, um, you're going to go to upcoming events. Make sure that you select career fairs. And then this is just going to have all the career fairs in the system and you scroll by date. So um, I'm already registered for our two upcoming FSU events. So they don't appear here, but you would just scroll down. Our STEM career fair is on the 22nd. And so you're going to see that in the September 22nd zone. And then our Seminole Futures Career Fair is going to be on the 24th. So you'll scroll down and see that there. Once you're registered for events, they should just populate on your My Events here. So let me make sure I pull up the chat as well, um, just to catch any questions that might be coming in. Okay. Um, so from this page, you should be able to click manage event for one of your upcoming events. Here you can see the different majors that you've selected for this event. So it might be that um, you look at a variety of majors for different positions, but you know that you're coming to our STEM fair to recruit certain majors. So that might be different than your general profile. So in the event management um, specifically for that event. You can set which majors you're looking for, what degree types, the kinds of positions that you're recruiting for. So that might vary depending on the event that you're participating in. So you can um, manage that here as well as locations if you sponsor work authorization um, and then some more specific questions for the event. Chat rooms, which we're going to get into a little bit more detail about um, in a second, but this is where you can set what chat rooms you're going to have for the event. For our events, you get one main chat room that you're going to use during the event and that students are going to access. And then you also can have one private chat room that's only going to be available to you and your team. Um, so you can use that for private communication during the event between each other and students don't have access to that. So those are the only two. You cannot set more than these two uh, chat rooms. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And then event reminders. So again, if you have multiple people in your organization, but only certain ones are attending certain events, you can set which team members are going to get uh, notifications and event reminders for that specific event.
and you can also add new people to that event from here as well. Um, so there is a question in the chat um, about previously attending the FSU FAMU College of Engineering um, Career Fair. That is the FSU STEM Fair. It is the same event. Um, so again, this event here, this blue STEM, um, is for the FSU and FAMU College of Engineering. So it's a shared college, and this event um, is for both. Um, I believe and Leah, you can type in the chat or correct me if I'm wrong, that FAMU also has their own um, career fair that they do, which is separate from FSU. This specific STEM one is a shared STEM career fair. So that's a good thing to make sure that you're aware of. All right, so now that you um, are looking at managing your event, what are you going to do before the event to make sure that you're ready to go? Um, so before the event, you want to make sure that you do two main things. The first is complete your organization profile. So if you click that edit organization here, you can go to the specific event that you're looking for. So if we stay with this uh, STEM career and internship fair on the 22nd, um, you can preview what your profile will look like to students. So you can see that we have various logos here. Um, we have our link to our website and social media accounts as well. Um, and then you can see all of the different information that students are able to see. So um, a general just welcome message. Um, what are your chat times for that event? What majors you're interested in? So again, as you're going through your profile and setting those up in the event management section, um, students are going to be able to see all of that information that you put here. And then at the end, your website and contact information. So just making sure that that is as up to date um, and filled out as possible so that students as they're reviewing your profile have all of the information that they need to make a decision. The next thing that you're going to want to do is to review candidates. So up at the top here, you can see um, that there is a candidates tab. This is where you go to review all of the candidates for the event. So looking at all candidates, if you were to go down to the specific event you're looking for, you can see all of the candidates so far that have registered for the event. Now this can change day to day as more and more students are registering to attend our events. I think something that we're noticing with virtual events is because students don't have to go physically and attend an event, they're kind of making last minute decisions on whether or not they want to attend an event or not. We are definitely encouraging all of our students to get registered early and to get their information in the system as soon as possible because we know that employers are going to be looking at this candidate's profile. So we're definitely encouraging them to get registered as soon as possible. But, you know, every day more and more students are registering. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so reps and admins are able to review candidates. So anybody that you have listed as um, someone attending this event will be able to see the event show up in this drop down menu and see all the candidates for that event. So you're going to want to make sure, though, that you are adding your different representatives to the specific events that they're going to. If they're not added to that event, then they won't be able to see the candidates. Um, so from here, you can see the different um, ways to kind of filter um, to look at candidates, if they're willing to relocate, um, a classification level, and you can select multiple. So let's say I'm looking at seniors, but I also want to look at juniors as well, um, just upperclassmen in general, you can do that. You can select majors, so let's say we're looking for chemical engineering. Um, again, you can select multiple. Um, and you can just kind of go from there looking at all these different ones, states, um, graduation dates, if you're looking specifically for graduates who are graduating December or May, you can select that as well. Just know that the more criteria that you put in the filter, the less and less candidates that you're going to see. So just make sure that you're being aware of that. You can also click this very helpful button here that says has a resume. 
So it will only show you candidates that already have a resume put into their profile. If that's something that's important to you and you don't want to get excited about a candidate but they don't have their resume so you can't really put them into your system, that's a good button to have. So you'll then get a list of all these different candidates. You can then click on their profiles and review their profile. Um, again, any of these buttons over here that has CV next to it is going to be a student that has a resume. So if they just have the kind of ID icon, but it doesn't have the CV next to it, that means that they haven't uploaded a resume or they just haven't made it visible to employers yet. Um, we do have a major resume reviewing event on Monday. So don't be surprised if a lot of students have their resumes either not in the system or not visible until after that event, because they may just be waiting to get their resumes reviewed. So um, you can click and see resumes here. You can download the resume here, as well as a lot of the information in their profile. Um, another button is this star button. So if you're looking over a candidate and they're of interest to you, you can mark them as um, an interested candidate. So we can get a couple in there. Um, if during the event you're having a conversation with a student and you really, really liked the conversation, you can also click Mark Candidate as Chat Favorite. So that way you know that you want to go back and review the chat between them or you want to make sure that you have a conversation with them. If that's how you want to use that button, um, you definitely can do that as well. And then you can make notes. Um, and so if you wanted to make a note on a particular student about a question in their resume or um, something that just really caught your eye, you can do that here. And that way, as you review the candidate before you have a chat with them on the day of the event, that note will stay there, uh, which we're going to talk about the chat feature in just a second. So that'll come back up. Um, but also, if you want to make sure that certain things are noticed about the candidate and you don't know if you're going to be the one speaking to that candidate. So for Diego, um, one of my team members might be the one who has an individual conversation with Diego on the day of the event, but you want to make sure that certain thoughts or questions that you had got seen, you can put those here so that any of your team members can see them. So this is the list of all the candidates, but as you're going through and you're liking candidates, you're like, you're saying that they're a chat favorite, you can also just click these uh, filters up here and it will only show you the candidates that you have liked or that you have a chat favorite for. Um, so that's really helpful as you're going and reviewing candidates to see that. Um, also, another thing that I wanted to mention on this all candidates filter is that you can, let me see, you can filter candidates by all candidates, candidates that you have already reviewed. So you just want to look at the candidates that you've already looked at to kind of go back through that list. You can do that. Or let's say you went through and you started reviewing candidates, but you want to go back and see only candidates that you haven't reviewed yet. You can also do that as well. So it's very helpful um, as you're going in each day and you only want to see candidates that you haven't seen yet. These are very helpful filters up here to have. The last one up here is the expressed interest tab. So as students are going through and reviewing employers, they have the opportunity to select a box that says that I want this employer to know that I'm interested in them. Um, we're marketing it to them as a way to re really get themselves on an employer's radar um, because you can see all of the students who have expressed interest in your positions, in your company, whatever. Um, but we do, I want to draw attention to this notice up here. Um, not all candidates will do that though. They might be really interested in you and want to talk to you, but they just don't click that button. Um, so we really recommend, while this is an awesome feature to have and it can really bring some students to your attention, um, don't just use this tab. Still go through all of the candidates and see what potential candidates you might be interested in as well. So, um, and I will make sure to talk about reports later, um, but if you wanted to do reports before the event, you can also um, run a resume book. So let's say if you wanted to review the resumes for all of the students who have expressed interest, you can click all, um, sorry, here, you can select all, 
create a resume book for the candidates, and then it'll create a PDF file that has all of those students' resumes in one file for you. So that's also very helpful. Okay. I think that was everything that I have for before the event and getting ready beforehand. I'll take a moment to pause real quick. Does anyone have any questions about any of that? Yes, you definitely can see the list of students during the event as well. Um, so while the event is going, you can step out of the chat room, look at the candidates list and review those um, throughout the event. There's a question, will the admin have rights to pull all of the my likes resumes tags by their associates? Um, so the question is more about, can you as an admin look at all of the um, my liked candidates list for each of your team members and just pull it all into one? That I'm not sure about, Leah, do you know if that's a feature available for admins? So you can, I think I'm understanding, and if we're not, please go ahead and clarify if you want to speak up on the mic, that's fine too. Um, so after, after, I know Connor just kind of went over the beginning parts, but after the fair is over, you can also pull transcripts of all of the students that you spoke to or who you had a chat with. So if you want to use it that way versus who liked you in the beginning and then who you chatted with and kind of compare, um, you can definitely do that. Did that answer your question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, yeah. okay. awesome. Thank you guys. So yeah, I, I think to a certain extent, just to kind of give an overall what my question was about is that as an admin, uh, we're responsible of really just kind of pulling all of those resumes out. And it helps us uh, when we can know what our assist associates had identified as a, a favorite or a like. Um, as that's how we decide on who we are going to invite for interviews and kind of which resumes do we want to look at first, right? So um, we don't, instead of having each individual to have to pull this down and send it to us separately and then we compile it, um, and at, I was wondering if me, myself as an admin, I can just go in there and pull a report um, for all of those three, like my likes, um, favorites, as well as interested um, in my company. Yeah, so it will, anyone that gets favorited within your company, it won't, it won't individualize it by representative. It will just be oh. overall. Okay, so, perfect. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Cool. And we're going to go over this reports feature um, as well after we review the chat room. So we can definitely dive a little more into that. Um, so looking at the day of, so during the event. Um, I think the main thing that folks are gonna be interested in here is going to be that chat room feature, because that's going to be kind of where all of the action's happening on that day. So looking at your chat room, we'll scroll down to the FSU Career Center, join chat. So this is what the main chat room is going to look like um, on the day of the event. And an analogy that I've been using that's been pretty helpful in understanding the workflow of the day is going to be, think of this main chat room as your table at a career event. So at an in-person career event, you're going to have your table that has all of your information and is kind of the hub for you and your team. Um, as students come, you might have a large group of students at your table um, that are all wanting to speak with a representative. Um, and there might just be a line of students waiting to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. You know, to give them something to do while they're waiting, you might have 
um, informational brochures or pamphlets or something for them to check out um, while they're waiting. This is kind of where that happens. So this main chat room is kind of where all of the students that are interested in speaking with someone at your company are going to come. Um, you may have, you, you'll have your general welcome kind of up here. Um, if you want to tell students as they're entering the room um, to review a informational brochure that you have about summer internship opportunities, um, here in the file section, you can upload different files for them to review and they as a candidate can see those files. Um, so you can give that instruction up here in your welcome message that says, hey, you know, um, please review the, you know, informational uh, PDF that we have on our summer, opp summer opportunities that you might be interested in. Um, you can also have your uh, video sharing. So if you look up here at broadcast media, you can broadcast video and audio. And so that way you can see yourself um, during the event. Um, only in this main chat room, only um, recruiters and um, your team will have the opportunity to broadcast their media during the main chat feature. So if you just wanted to have your face as a welcoming face to the chat room and be talking to students with your audio instead of the chat, you can always have one team member here kind of doing that for you. Um, you can also share your screen, which I did something unfortunately that does not allow me to share my screen. Um, but if you were to click share screen and audio, you can select what screen you'd like to share, share it. I keep getting this you know, um, error message. So you may want to test that before the day of the event if you know that you're going to want to share your screen and have maybe like a recruitment video playing on a loop. Um, you may want to test that just to make sure that you can. If you get this message, contact the Career Eco help email. Career Eco has been very, very quick to respond and very helpful for us. And so definitely getting that set up beforehand is going to be good for you. But you can also do that. So you can either have your video and audio playing, you can have just your audio. If you want to be able to respond to questions in this main chat verbally, um, you can do that. Um, you can share your screen and have, a, have your website up and maybe you're going through your website or have a video playing. You can do all of that here. You can also have stored messages, which I very highly recommend because you may have a general welcome message that you want to send out, you know, every five minutes or 10 minutes or something. Um, so that is very easy to do if you just have a stored message. So you have your organization's stored chat responses. You can add a response that anyone in your organization can copy and paste and send in this chat room. You can also have your private stored chat responses. So if you want to give your contact information or have a personalized welcome message or something like that, you can also have personalized chat responses here. Um, so this is going to be very helpful because as I'm sure you all know, you probably say, you know, your same spiel about internship opportunities you have coming up or um, maybe about the mission of your company or things like that that you say kind of frequently throughout the day. Um, that allows you to have all of those ready to go so that you're not typing them out over and over throughout the day. Over here on the left hand side, you can see the participants list. So obviously we don't have any students in right now. Um, but on the day of the event, whenever you have students here, this is where they will show. Um, and it will show up in order of when they come into your chat room. So that's been a question that we've gotten a couple times um, is, you know, whenever I'm back in the main chat room and I'm looking to pull a student into a private chat, how do I know which student has been waiting the longest? Um, you can look at that through this chat participants list here. Um, a couple of the icons up here that you can see, um, chat icons. Um, so in a private chat, we'll show if one of your, if you know you're looking at the chat participants and there's a student or one of your team members that shows in a private chat, you know that they're in a private chat not to disturb them. Um, you can see if a chat has been initiated with a particular student to make sure that two of your team members don't try to uh, initiate a private chat with the same student. And you can also see when a student is available for a private chat, um, as well as busy, typing, online, idle, all of this great stuff right here um, 
And if you look at an icon that you're unfamiliar with, you don't know what it means, this chat icons uh, menu up here will be kind of the key for the different chats. Um, you can also set yourself to busy. So that way um, your team members know, oh, Connor is not available right now. Um, let me go ahead and take the student or something. You can use that as well. Speaking of being able to communicate with your team, um, I mentioned that there is a private chat room just for you and your team. You can join that chat as well. And this, it's the same kind of setup, but this is gonna be a chat room just for you and your team to coordinate um, you know, a particular student that you might be interested in or who's gonna grab the next student or if you have to take a step away for 15 minutes to grab lunch or something. Um, this is where you can do all of that and it will say private room for staff and you can just kind of toggle between the two chat rooms here as well. It's very easy. Um, unfortunately, I cannot demo what a private chat room with a student is gonna look like because we don't have any student participants in the chat room, um, but only recruiters, so only um, employers will be able to initiate a private chat with a student. Students cannot initiate a private chat with you. Um, so just like a normal career event, you are the one that invites the student into the one-on-one -on -one conversation. Students should not be able to just come up and start talking to you. Um, so that is going to be here. You can invite a student to a private chat. And then in that private chat room, you will be able to share your video and audio and the student will be able to share their video and audio as well. So if you'd like to have more of that kind of virtual in-person face-to-face -face conversation, you can. Uh, we just ask that you be mindful that not all students are going to have access to a webcam or um, their internet connection might not support being able to do video. So um, some of our students will just need to use the chat feature and that's totally fine because you still have the chat feature in those private rooms as well. Um, there was a question, is there a link that can be shared for people to join outside of Career Eco? Um, I'm a little confused by what you mean there. Are you talking about um, people who haven't created Career Eco profiles to be able to join the event? Yeah, um, I'll just kind of talk on the mic with it. Um, so if we have a recruiter that they would like um, somebody else who's not attending this event outside of Career Eco, like could we send them a link that would send them straight to a video chat with a student or maybe this portal when they're not a registered attendee is the question. No, so they're going to have to be a registered attendee for the event in Career Eco. So that means that they'll need both a Career Eco profile and they will have to register for the specific event, um, either as a student attendee or as uh, an employer, as a recruiter. Okay, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. So launching the private chat, I've actually never done it because we, I haven't had a student in um, before. Leah, I don't know if you, don't, if you know how to initiate a private chat, yeah, so it's it's fairly easy, um, and I'm going to go reference the tutorials as well because I'm pretty sure there's a screenshot of what it looks like in there as well. So I'm gonna I'll look for that in just a quick second. Um, but you will essentially you'll click on that student's name. I believe it's a right click, and you will say invite to private chat, and then the student will have to reciprocate to accept that chat from you. Um, and so then that's how that will that's how that will go. You will essentially click on that student's name invite them to the chat. As long as they accept it, you're good to go. Cool. And I just pasted um, four different tutorial, either videos or PDFs of slides from Career Eco that also will demo uh, what that looks like. So you can definitely use those as well. Um, and to answer, can students initiate a private chat as well? No, only employers will be able to initiate a private chat with a student. Yes, I believe that whenever you initiate a private chat with a student, it will show up here as one of these additional tabs um, for a different chat room. So you should have three tabs, your main event room, um, your private chat for your staff, and then your private chat with you and another student. 
So yeah, it will actually look a little bit different. So on Connor's screen here, it will kind of split split the screen and and so your private chats will pop up at the bottom of your screen with who you're talking to. And yes, you can have multiple private chats going at the same time. Awesome. Okay. Um, okay, I think that was all the things that I wrote down to make sure to mention about the chat room. Any other questions? Does the private chat initiated icon show on a student after they have already finished a private chat with a colleague? Um, I don't believe so. I think that if the private chat icon is only if a student is currently in a private chat room, once you end that private chat with the student, that icon should then go away. Um, if the student then stays in your main chat room and they want to speak with another, you know, representative, then they will stay in that participant list. Um, but I imagine most students after a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a rep will then leave the main chat room and will go to another employer's chat room. Cool. Anything else about the chat rooms or day of kind of activities? Notes in a candidate only be taken when in a private chat room. No, um, if I'm understanding your question right, um, whenever you go to the candidates list, you can view a particular candidate. Um, so let's say I spoke with um, Megan, I don't know, um, and I wanted to make a note about her. I could type that note here in the profile, which um, when students are in the chat, you should be able to click on their name and you can view their profile. So I would strongly suggest viewing a student's profile before starting a one-on-one -on -one chat with them um, just to kind of look over their resume real quick or maybe you start a private chat with a student and you say hey so nice to meet you I'm going to review your profile real quickly um, you know let me know any questions that you might have while I'm doing that or something along those lines or you may say take some time to review the files that we have listed while I'm doing that. So you can kind of work that flow, um, whatever works best for you, but definitely you'll have access to review that candidate as well as make any notes or comments. I would definitely suggest always having at least one rep in the main chat room. You don't need one in the main chat room at all times, um, which, you know, if you want to give those instructions in your welcome bar up at the top to just as any students come into the chat room, they see that and they know to go look at the files that you have or to review your website or check out your social media. Um, but if you can, always having one rep in the chat room to just kind of welcome students, moderate. A lot of times some students might um, just post some questions in the main chat room, not in the private chat. So being able to field those questions in the main chat room as well um, would be a good idea to have. Um, can we have reps in private chats and leave the main chat room unoccupied? So like Leah mentioned before though, um, as you have a private chat, the main chat room will be on the top half and your private chat will be on the bottom half. So you can still keep an eye on both if you see somebody come to the main chat room and you just want to click on type a message up in the main chat. So it says type message to main room or on the bottom half you'll see type message to private room. So you can definitely kind of bounce between those two as well. It's, it's kind of up to you guys and however you want to do it logistically. Um, that's kind of the beauty of this is depending on how many recruiters you have available, um, you know, and how, how you maybe want to funnel the students if you want someone to sit in the main chat room and then only certain people talk to um, students one on one. It, it's kind of up to you guys however you want to do it and whatever's going to work best with your recruiting strategy. So um, just kind of maybe thinking that through just for a couple minutes before the fair. Um, and you're able to get into the system now. So I would definitely suggest that you get in there and kind of, you know, you can do a little practice run if you need to with, with your recruiters that you're working with or if it's just one of you. Um, I would definitely suggest that you go ahead and get in there and just kind of play around with it. Definitely. Connor, um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this is Connie from Savannah River Remediation. 
Um, so are we, can we invite students to come into our chat room or is it really just up to them to join our room? So it is, so you send an invitation to the student to join a private chat. Ultimately, they do have to like accept that to come into the private chat room. Um, but, but does that mean, but when we send them an invitation for a private chat, does that mean they are already in our um, overall chat room? Yeah. Like, is there anything drawing them? Is there a way to invite uh, them into our overall chat room? I no. see what you're so once the student has to like willingly on their own fruition, enter your specific chat room to come talk to you. Um, and so then once they've entered your room or they walked up to your booth, if you will, um, then that is when you can initiate a private chat with them. Or what you could also do, um, you know, as students are pre-registering and they're liking your organization, um, you know, you can screen those resumes and say, hey, shoot them an email um, and say, hey, you know, I would love to see you. Can you stop by at X time and be looking for them to come into your room? Um, so you could also get ahead of it that way if you wanted to. Um, but there is, isn't really any like going out into the main space where all the students would be and inviting them in. Okay, thank you. And that made me think of something, Connie. I really appreciate that question. Um, so in your um, managing the event, so um, again, from the event dashboard, if you were to go to your event and click manage event, from the chat rooms, here is where you can edit the chat room, create a chat room, um, to put what is going to be the topic of your chat room. So the welcome message, this is that thing that's gonna be in that blue bar at the top. The topic though is what appears to students um, that are just kind of going through the chat rooms because they'll also have a list of just all the employers and all the chat rooms um, at the event. And so making that topic line something really eye grabbing and catching, um, you know, however it is that you might want to do it. But if it's just, you know, um, I put that FSU Career Center staff are here to answer any questions about the fair. You might want to put something about, you know, come learn about exciting leadership opportunities with this company. Um, if you're going to be doing um, maybe like a raffle for all of the participants who come to your chat room and speak with a representative, your name will be entered down to receive a goodie care package or something from the company. Being able to say that in your topic, things that will grab students' attention, I think, well, this is going to be the way that you're going to do that. And then to another question, can you invite more than one candidate into a chat room or is it one candidate per private chat room? Um, Leah, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you can have multiple private chats with students going on, but it will only be you and that one student in that room. So you can't have a group of five students in one room and all kind of fielding questions from all five um, together. Kurt, Kurt, that's correct. So the, the private chats are one-on-one -on -one private chats. So if you want to have five private chats going, then you need to have five separate representatives going all at the same time. Okay, and then real quickly, um, because I've mentioned it a couple times already. So after the event, you've you know had all of these chats, you've talked to all these different students. Um, up here at the top, if you click reports, this is where you can then run various different reports of um, your chat room transcripts, um, your participant report, um, and then also being able to run a resume uh, book as well. So um, I was playing around before, and if you were to do like the chat room participants um, for the STEM fair, I could run the report and then it will download an Excel file, um, which I think, doesn't show up, but it is an Excel file that will then list all of the different participants that entered your chat room and then all of the like the information that they put in their profiles. So it'll have a link to their resume. It will have their major, their year, um, whether they're willing to relocate, like all of that stuff will be in this Excel file all in one place for you. Um, another thing to look at, so back to reports. Um, 
So you can then run a report for each event that you're at for all of the different candidates as well. Um, and then from candidates, like I mentioned before, um, just to go a little more into detail, if you wanted to um, run a report on all of the candidates that expressed interest in your organization, um, you can do candidate reports and then resume book. And that will again print all of the, or create a PDF file with all of their resumes. And you can do that for any candidates that you select. So if you wanted to do it for all of your liked candidates, um, if you wanted to go to all candidates and then filter by um, certain criteria in the filters and then select all of those candidates and create a resume book for those candidates to review, any candidates that you go through and select you can, by clicking on these checkboxes here, you can then run a candidate report and create a resume book for. Okay, so we have some questions in the chat. So the company rep can't have multiple one-on-one -on -one private chats at the same time. I believe that a company rep can have multiple private chats at the same time. Is that correct, Leah? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, Marielle. I think I misunderstood how you worded that. Um, you as the recruiter can have three, four, five private chats going at the same time. You just can't have multiple students in a private chat. So however you wanna manage that or however many chats you want to have at the same time, um, you can figure that out as it's going and kind of figure out your traffic of what's comfortable for you. I would say if there's general information that you want all students that you're talking to in a chat to know, the main chat room would be a great place to put that information. So that would be a great stored message to have in your stored messages for your main chat room. Um, and just every so often posting that message that has just general information that you don't wanna have to tell every single student in a private chat, but you just want all students to know, that would be a great place to put that. Okay, awesome. So I think that pretty much covers all of the information that I was looking to cover in the demo. Um, any additional questions about what we've covered, things about Career Eco, things about the day of the event, um, anything along those lines? Can the admin go in and add stored messages in advance? Yes, any participant um, from your organization can go in ahead of time and add messages. So if you were to go to manage event and then chat rooms, I believe, maybe um, I saw it earlier. It's, it's also crucial okay. that if, if you're the administrator on your account, but you are not actually attending the event, you need to make sure that you add your representatives to your account. Otherwise, they will not be able to get into the fair. So um, just please make note of that and make sure you get that done sooner rather than later so there isn't like a mad scramble the morning of and nobody needs that kind of stress. So um, just definitely make a note of that. Yes, so I found out where to do that. So at the top, if you were to go to the admin page, you can see all of your um, team members and you can set them to be admins or not. So I made everyone on the employer relations team an admin for us. Um, you can have some people not be admins, that's up to you. But up here, this is where you can go to edit your organization profile. You can upload those documents like I was talking about before. And then you can also upload any stored messages that you want to just go in and have ready for your team to use. Yeah, so um, to the question in the chat, if a company is only recruiting specific majors, is there any way to set up our public chat room to only allow those majors in? No, there isn't but there is a lot of ways that you, or I guess there are a lot of ways that you can make it very clear to students that you are only interested in these majors. So if you were to go to, um, for the event, if you were to go to your profile um, and set what majors you're recruiting for that specific event, that is the first way. And as students are searching companies, they will see what majors you're looking at. 
Um, and so that's kind of a first signifier to students about what majors. And a lot of times, just like you can filter uh, candidates in your search, they can filter companies. So a lot of students are going to be filtering employers by their major. So they're only going to look for employers that list their major. Um, so that's a really great way to do that. You can also then in your profile um, for that event, set it to where um, in this welcome message, you can put, we are only looking for these majors, if that's really important and you really want to make sure students know that. Um, it's also listed here under majors, what majors you're going to be recruiting for. Is there just one set time for the entire event or is it set by our admin? So the times for the event, Leah, nine to four, um, that is the time for the whole event. If you wanted to go in and put specific chat times, um, again, here, chat rooms. If you wanted to go in and put specific um, times for your chat room, so, here I can list specific chat times and this you can put multiple of. So if you wanted to put, you know, nine to 10 and then like 1030 to 12 and then you're taking a lunch, you can put multiple different chat times that you're going to be available for. Um, but the event itself does run nine to four. So those are kind of the brackets that you have to play with. And it's, it's not required that you fill in like multiple like little chunks of sessions. You can leave the fair as nine to four. And then if you want to like figure out internally um, which recruiter is going to cover which shift or if it's just you and you want to put on there that there's you're going to take lunch from X time to X time, um, then the students will see that and um, just know kind of what your schedule is like. So it's kind of up to you. You can break it out so that the students can see it or you can figure it out internally to make sure you have coverage, um, whatever is easiest for you guys. Hope all of this is helping everyone. I'm glad everybody's here. Yes, they do. So once you add your representatives, it will ping them and send them an email um, with, I believe it makes them a password and then they'll log in and change their password. Um, and so, you know, if you need to reset or recreate that password for them or their account, um, you can do that as the administrator as well um, on that little reset button there. Um, if for some reason they, you know, lost the email or whatnot, but yes, you can do that. And I would just note, um, you know, I know there's lots of different moving parts here right now. So if you can just double check that you are registered for the correct fair, I usually get, you know, probably five frantic emails as we get closer to fair time. Um, that, oh my God, I accidentally registered for the wrong fair. So if you just want to double check that you're registered for either both or the correct one, um, go ahead and do that now and get ahead of it so we can get you situated. Um, the cutoff for registration is this Friday, so I do anticipate to be a little bit busy. Um, but if you do have any other questions, please feel free to let me or Connor know and we can get you situated. Definitely. And I just posted those, um, the tutorial videos and PDF slides again in the chat. Those are going to be super helpful for you and your team to review ahead of time. Um, and so, like Leah said, you should be able to see which events that you're registered to attend here under my events. Um, also, just to plug, we do have a few more career events for the rest of the semester. So you can definitely take a look at those if um, you have any opportunities that you feel would um, fit with those events. Any other questions? Yeah, definitely look at those 